We're just going to show you how to get D7X set up for a first time user. Basically, just go to the D7X manual. The download will always be at the top of the page. We want to get the starter config for new users. If you're an existing user and you're importing a configuration, you want the blank config. So go ahead and download the starter config. This has a lot of predefined custom apps and auto mode profiles and templates with uh, certain branding items, logos, and uh, etc. And these will help you get started with uh, minimal configuration. Just follow the instructions that we have included. I'm also going to download the D7X editions. These are whitelists and malware hashes, which are used with Killamall, Dion Installer, and the malware search tool. That's functionality that's included with D7X. Kill them all and Dion Installer will use the whitelists where the malware search tool will use whitelists as well as blacklists in the form of these malware hashes. These are actually known malicious files that are used with one of the protections of CryptoPrevent. It's important to note that the blacklists or these malware hashes rather are not automatically deleted by default. That is something that you would do manually through the malware search tool. Once it found all the items and reported them to you specifically as matching the malware hashes, you can then just select all and delete or pick and choose and investigate as you need to. The white lists that are included are actually for like default Windows configurations with a few basic apps that you would find on new PCs. These are essentially files and directories that are whitelisted throughout a brand new install of Windows. They've been used and tested by techs for several years now. In fact, I, I believe we need to update for the latest release of Windows 10. It's been a little while since we've updated those, so just download that. I'll show you how to plug that in. All right, so we've got our downloads. And basically, we're just going to extract this to the desktop. Anywhere else you would rather put it is fine. And I'm going to skip the instructions, but the simple install method is to do the exact same thing with your definitions. Replace a file. There is a default uh, kill them all whitelist with just like two items, I believe, in the standard download. Those definitions actually end up in the modules folder in this subfolder here. Now, I neglected to mention you may want to disable your antivirus software. In fact, currently Windows Defender does detect a component in D7, although D7X will, once it's registered properly, on any system when you start it, it will whitelist itself and it, its subdirectories in Windows Defender. Currently through the registration process, you may want to go ahead and disable Windows Defender or any other antivirus software that you're using because of false positive. Unfortunately, Microsoft is about the slowest to respond to any request to whitelist uh, any new binaries that we put out. And this, in this particular case, it's one of our modules that's getting detected. So, of course, D7X will download any missing components that, that is necessary for its operation when it starts up. And this will occur after whitelisting itself with, within Windows Defender. So, if it actually needed any of those files, it would download them again. We're just going to get started by launching D7X. For a new user, you just need to enter your username and password. And I am going to use a default, or not, I'm rather one I just set up for this. So I'm just going to activate the account on the server. Now, if you purchased after. July 30th, which has not been that long ago uh, th at this time, you do not need your license key and registered company name. That will be included in the license that is actually placed on the server. 
So when you activate your account from that last screen, it will automatically download your license file containing this information. So you won't actually need this information if you're a new subscriber. However, if you subscribed in early July or before July of 2018, you will have this information separately and you'll have to enter it on this screen. Uh, if the new license is downloaded and like I said if you purchase afterwards you won't even see this prompt. It's important to copy paste and enter in this data exactly as it was in your registration email if you have this separately. And once we click, a, once we click to save D7 will restart itself and start downloading some components that it needs if anything is missing. Um, you'll also be presented with the end user license agreement one time. You'll never see that again and you'll never see this prompt again but it's very important. You are going to create a technician password here. This is used to con encrypt your configuration when it is transmitted uh, and actually before it's transmitted to our servers, our cloud server, where it will sit in the encrypted archive that's encrypted with this password. So don't forget this password or you will lock yourself out of your configuration. And we do not have it. We don't keep the information or store it. We don't collect this password. That's why we ask you to create it because we don't want to know it. This password is also used in various other functionality throughout D7X, so your employees are going to want uh, to have this. This is actually used in other functionality, such as the lock screen option. D7 can lock the screen so that a technician can leave the system while D7 is automating some process and the customer or someone else can't just walk by and mess with it. So just enter in a password. Make sure that you will never lose this password.